Imagine getting a job working in collections and you're afraid of calling people to collect. You hate calling to collect money from people that are either dodging you or making excuses or have legitimate issues, da 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 da. Or maybe you're chasing the dollar signs or whatever because collections type of jobs typically come with a big bonus, whatever the case might be. But in general, wouldn't you think that's a pretty important thing to reconcile with yourself before you would take the job. You know you're going to have to call people. You know you're going to hear all types of excuses and crap. You know some people are going to be crappy with you. And if you're not willing to confront that, if you're not willing to handle that, if you're not willing to deal with it, you probably shouldn't take the job, right? Right? Exactly. And sometimes people do. And it's crazy to me. But I look at professional wrestling. You know, wrestling is many different types of things, or at least it's supposed to be. It's less and less about them more than ever. Like, you know, as much as everybody focuses on the moves and the matches and so forth, like, especially when you become a national television product, a national television brand, you have to do more than that. You have to be able to be a character. You have to be able to be a storyteller. You have to be able, by God, to tell your story via your mouth via the microphone, meaning promos. So you can imagine my lack of surprise on the one hand and my total like being taken aback by what Jungle Boy said recently in his podcast appearance with Renee. I'm going to try and quote this the best I can, uh, but I want to give full context. Say that I quote, I hate doing promos. It's something I never wanted to do, and I made a point not to do it, and somehow I got by without it, and now when I have to do it, when they tell me I have to do it, I want to run away and hide somewhere. It's just so not my style. It's not the way I, I don't know. It's just not my thing. But I think it's getting to the point where at some point I've got to buckle down and get to it. At some point coming soon, I'll guess I get on, unquote. You think? I'll continue. And I quote again. It's cool because right now Christian is kind of taking that over. And I've just got to sit there and look pretty and let him do it. As much as I hate it and I really don't like it, I know that once I get it, it'll feel good to have overcome that and done it. I guess I'm looking forward to that part. For me in the beginning, I made a point to not really do them because I wanted people to focus only on what I was doing in the ring. I feel like coming up, I wanted to really stay separate from my dad pretty much and that whole thing. I didn't want people knowing about that. People would ask me to say things about it, and I was just like, I just want you to watch what I'm doing. I really like Jungle Boy. Let me not talk and just wrestle. And I was like, just watch that because that's what I want to do. For me, it's also just, I guess, I'm soft-spoken in a lot of ways. A lot of wrestling promo stuff kind of like embarrasses me. The way it's so over the top and overacting, when I see that, I'm like, oh my God, I couldn't do that if you paid me money which they do. I just can't. So I feel like I go the other way and try to just be quiet, but I feel like that comes across a lot of the times like I really don't care. I'm not into it, which is not the case. It's just I don't feel comfortable doing it. Unquote. Look. Look. Right. You couldn't do the over-the-top overacting if you were paid for it. Your tag team partner is a magnificent freaking dinosaur! The hell's wrong with you? Like this. This is the type of mindset, unfortunately, that has permeated professional wrestling. I want to say, I do acknowledge, and it takes some courage to acknowledge your fears. It takes courage to acknowledge your weaknesses. It takes courage to say, you know what? That scares me. So I'll, for Jungle Boy Jack Perry, I at least will give him that. Now, that's kind of a ballsy thing to say and not a lot of people will say it. They'll try to deflect or they'll try to make excuses or they'll focus instead on the good things they do because nobody ever wants to hear anything bad about themselves. That's just the reality of it. So at least he does that. But why oh why in the bluest of blue fucks would you get into professional wrestling if you're terrified of talking. Why, oh why, ding dong, dumb dick, 
Would you get to a place in your career where you know you're going to have to talk and be so mortified and afraid of it that you avoid it at all cost? What the hell is wrong with you? And what the hell is wrong with professional wrestling that you're featuring people on decent, sizable platforms like AEW has right now with TNT and that two-hour Dynamite show every week that you're going to push and promote such one-dimensional talents? He doesn't have tremendous size. His ring stuff, and I know a lot of you sit there in your own loincloths and you geek out to it, but the moves he does are no different than hundreds of other people in the damn business. There is nothing different or unique about him individually. He comes across as vanilla and bland. If we're talking about the term vanilla midget, he would be the epitome, personification of that. And to sit there and see him say, well, I don't want to talk because I don't want to be associated with my dad's stuff. Fine, I get it. You want to make your own way. You want to do your own thing. You would think that you might want to have learned from your dad, Lord rest his soul, when he was alive to help you with that to get better at something like that, to help you kind of confront your fear, but to sit there and run away and hide like a little bitch because you're afraid of it? And to sit there and say, oh, I just want people to focus on my wrestling. That's the problem with wrestling now. It's not just about the damn moves and matches, idiots. You got to be more than that. You've got to be a performer. You've got to be an entertainer. You've got to be a storyteller. And by God, you got to be able to talk sometimes. Now, some of you are going to point out some folks that you say, well, they were terrible talkers, like Bret Hart was terrible on the mic. I agree. He was the drizzling shits on the mic for a long time. You could always go back and watch his old provos, and you could see how nervous he was and scared he was and mortified of it, and he knew he wasn't good. But I always give Bret Hart respect to this. It took him years, but damn it all, he didn't run from it. He didn't hide from it. He didn't try to avoid it at all costs. He stood there like a man and kept working on it. He kept doing it. He kept practicing his craft. And by the time he got to 1997, Team Canada Bret Hart, some of that mic work was absolutely fantastic. As he figured out his rhythm, he figured out the character. He figured out what he wanted to say. And especially when he was the whiny, bitchy Bret Hart, that's some of the best shit ever, period. But Bret Hart spent over a decade trying to work on it because he knew he wasn't great on the stick. He knew he wasn't great with promos, and he talks about it. But damn it, he kept doing it. There's something respectable and commendable about that. Some of you are going to talk about, well, then there's somebody like a Sabu. Okay, what about a damn Sabu? Are we talking about freaking ECW? Are we talking about the late 1990s here? Are we talking about an era of professional wrestling where all the companies on the big level had all types of guys that could be characters and personalities and talk? No, we're not. Sabu stood out in that time. Sabu stood out in that time because he was different. Now he would just be another random jabroni. So that's another bad example. All of these people that want to get into the wrestling and all of these people that sit there and go to these wrestling schools and shit, what they really ought to be doing, in my humble opinion, is for the sixth First six months, 12 months, maybe 18 months, however fuck long it takes, you send them to damn acting school. Get them in acting classes. You do promo classes. You don't even touch a damn ring. I understand everything ultimately culminates in the wrestling and it culminates in the matches. But we got plenty of people that can bump around like crazy. We've got plenty of people that can do all kinds of spectacular yet fake looking ass flips and kicks and dumb shit and all of that. But what we don't have in the business now are people that can talk. What we don't have now are people that can tell stories. What we don't have now that are people that can be characters, larger than life personalities, those that can reach through the television screen and grab you by the scrotum, grab you by the vag sack or whatever the hell, and suck you in. We don't need guys sitting there and getting pushed into big spots knowing they're one-dimensional ass promos or performers that aren't any different than literally dozens of other guys on your damn roster and hundreds of other guys in wrestling. That's stupid. And sitting there and running away from your fears is stupid. That's weak. If Jungle Boy went out there every week and he sucked on the mic, but by God, every week he was freaking trying 
and you could tell that he was putting forth the effort, effort like a Bret Hart. You knew he sucked. Like, you might knock it and say, oh, he sucks on the mic, you know, like a ricochet. But again, another guy you're talking about, you don't really see the effort to try and grow and work and improve and get better. Just being what he is. And we should not be commending that. We should not be applauding that. We should be calling that bullshit out. Because we don't need that type of mindset to permeate any more in professional wrestling than it already does. We have enough match and move guys. We need some movie making guys. We need some guys that can captivate with their personality. We need guys that can actually talk people into the arenas. Talk them into buying pay-per-views, guys and gals, frankly. We need different shit. And different shit now comes from people actually being able to talk. Like some of you might look at an MJF and you say, well, he's not that great in the ring comparison to a Jungle Boy. Who gives a shit? I'd much rather put an MJF on TV every damn week because I know he can be a character. I know he can be a personality. I know he can actually tell a story with his damn promos. Even if sometimes I think he overdoes it a little bit in terms of the volume of his voice, voice and so forth. I would much rather give him TV time than I would a Jungle Boy because a guy like a Jungle Boy is a fucking dime a dozen. I talk it about, oh, I've been talking to Co Tony Khan or come up with some ways I'm going to ease into it a little bit. So we'll see. I don't know. No, it's not ease the fuck into it, you coward. It's called grab that bull by the goddamn horns and take it on full bore. Appear every week on the damn YouTube show. And if it sucks, they can edit it out. Do pre-tapes shit every week. I'm damn dynamite. The only way you're going to get better and become a more well-rounded, more valuable performer for yourself, which means you make more money and the company does better with you, meaning they make more money, is that you have to attack this balls deep. Not sit there and skirt it like a little punk ass. I mean, I can't imagine the people say, you're going to have the people that are probably even in the comments with the flaming keyboard figures of fire talking about, oh, it doesn't matter. I really like his wrestling. Who gives a shit? We got plenty of people like that. Do something different. Do something unique. So many other, other things in this world have this great feeling of sadness and this homogenization. Can't we look at professional wrestling and get some type of damn spice and variety once again? I mean, I give him the, courage, the props for having the courage to say that he's scared of promos. Like, at least he knows his fear and he owns up to it. But then there's a true piece of ownership of saying, I'm going to take that damn weakness and try and make it a strength. I'm going to take that damn weak weakness and I'm going to put all my effort and energy towards that so I can be the best possible version of myself. Like, what he's doing right here should not be rewarded, should not be commended. Because it basically means he's settling for mediocrity. That he's scared to get outside of his comfort zone. That he's scared to grow and improve as a performer. And sometimes that means, unfortunately, you're going to face plant. Sometimes that means you're going to F up royally. But just like all of us in life, you can't run away from your fears. Because a lot of times you find out that you built up that fear to be much more than it really need to be. And when you try it, it's not so bad. And you feel that burden that weight lift off your shoulders and you feel so much better it's amazing what people can do when they don't run away from their fears they confront them and take them the head the fuck on i'm just astounded to to hear somebody getting some type of push in an aew like a jungle boy say what confirms so many things to me that so many of these guys and gals now in wrestling are terrified of it they don't want to do it because they don't know how to do it they don't want to do it and unfortunately, they're getting rewarded for being mediocre, one-dimensional performers that aren't even that great at that one dimension. We should expect and demand more as consumers. We should expect and demand more as wrestling fans, as stewards of the wrestling business. And frankly, the guys and gals in the business should certainly stop being the biggest marks in wrestling and should start expecting and demanding more because there could be so much more done and things could be so much better, but this type of mindset doesn't help anything.